The Ender 3 V3 Plus. Yes, there's another Ender and it's bigger and we're gonna talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank and today we're talking about the Ender 3 V3 Plus. Now you guys might remember, I just recently got done reviewing the Ender 3 V3 and God, I'm already tired of saying V3 and Ender. But anyway, no, it's not the Ender 3 V3 KE or SE. Those really weren't new versions of the Ender. They were like little teasers. They were just the V2s just upgraded. But the V3 series of the Ender 3, are you guys sick of it already? I am. The V3 series is actually like new and upgraded and I kind of really like it. If you saw the original V3 review, you'll know that I was actually a fan of that printer, even though the price range and the features kind of fell into a weird spot where it was kind of hard to justify over something like the K1, which is like just a better printer than it. But the V3 Plus here, not bad. Now, obviously you can see it's already built. No, I'm not gonna do an unboxing and review. Those days are over. The printer's build in like five minutes. The instructions are good. And this is what you're left with. Now, what do you get when you build it? What's so great about this printer? What are the features it has? What it's Creality trying to sell you again, just rebranded. Well, I'll refer to this as a medium sized 3D printer. It is 300 by 300 by 300 cubed. Yes, it's the same size as the K1 Max is, and it's a, uh, a uh, gantry bed slinger style printer. So the bed moves back and forth and back and forth. It says it can print up to 600 millimeters a second. We're gonna talk about that speed later because there's, there's issues with that. But it's a pretty nice printer. I like the direction Creality's going with these things. It uses the, uh, let me turn this thing on. While that's booting up, it uses a lot of the same parts and features from the K1 series, which is replacing the CR series, which again, I'm a fan of. If Creality just stays with the K1 series and does all the core XYs and they only have the Ender 3 series continuing to evolve. I think they need to retire the Ender 3. When's the Ender 4 coming out or unless it already exists and I missed it. But it has a really nice solid hot end extruder system, very similar to the K1s. Easy maintenance, easy access. The cable and ribbon systems very well put together. The frame is very sturdy and like robustly built. I think it's a die cast frame. It has some bracing in the back. The bed's really nice. It comes with this textured PEI sheet which uh really like that. And just a really nice user interface. I like the K1 system and I guess the V3 systems user interface. It is super easy and well laid out. You have your home, you have your, you know, home, um, home settings and your calibrations and your extrude and then your files and it is just super easy to set up and deal with. There's nothing confusing about it. It's all laid out right there in a decently sized screen. Now, what I immediately don't like, and that was one of my issues with the smaller version, is this weird spool holder anti-tangle thing. Yes, it's an anti-tangle spool. Um, I made that mistake in the last video. It's to stop the filament from like spooling out because when this thing homes, the print head moves all the way up, which then in turn, drags all the filament up and then it comes back down and already you can see maybe it's all like it's all tangled up and this is to stop it from like unspooling and getting all wrapped up in itself i just i just feel like there was a better way to do this or position the spool holder even up top or have like a direct drive feed system like we've done it before i don't know why this was the solution um I, who knows Creal maybe creality doesn't even know why they did it but Print after print after print, this never tangled up. So I guess this little anti-tangle thing worked fine because you're gonna see how many prints I got off of this thing and I never once had a like fight with it. it, it just worked. You don't need to do any calibrations, it does it itself. You don't need to level anything, it does it itself. It goes through all the same calibrations and checks and homing and vibration and whatever, all the same things that the K1s and K1 Maxes do. You just build it and it takes you through the whole prompt, calibrates itself and you're off to printing. So let's shut up about the printer and let's talk about the prints I was able to get off of it. Does it print good? First up, I threw this calibration cube at it. It came as a stock file and man, I have got to stop using black filament because you can't see it. Well, it's actually not too bad. It came out really good. Ignore my fingers. Just look at the, look at the print. Look at it. It's cool. Next up was this neat little thing that's been on most of the printers I've been testing lately. It's like this tolerance test tower thing and you can see there's like these cool spikes to show stringing and like they're, they printed really well and then there's all these little um, pistons here. You see them all moving? This is a tolerance test to see how close proximity the, uh, the parts can get to each other and you can see all of them move. When I took this off the build plate, they all just fell out like that. 
which means the tolerances on them are printing really well. The overhangs came out really nice. All the little, the bridging test, look at that. The bridging test came out almost perfect. A little bit of, little bit of drooping. Sorry about the, the focus here. Like I said, I'll, I promise I will stop printing in black filament. But um, yeah, everything came out really cool. But what else? Well, I switched over to some Sunlu PLA Plus. Uh, I stayed with some red, but I started throwing different colors at it. I printed a bunch of Flexi Rexies because of course I did. I need them for Etsy. And these little guys came out, these guys, little guys came out perfect. Look at that. Perfect little, per perfect little Rexies. Four at once, no issues. Neat. Then I did two at once and I don't really know what happened to the top layer here. Maybe there was a little bit of a jam, but it like under extruded and didn't finish. This is the only weird thing that happened that I don't have an explanation for because all the other Rexies came out fine. Like I swapped to a different red and they came out, they came out great. So I don't know. Oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, nice and shiny. Look at that. Yeah. Threw some white filament at it. No issues. And then I decided to print something all at once. I loaded the build plate with uh, the parts to a sword and it came out pretty good. See, here it is. This is a uh, Captain Hoshina's sword from Kaiju number eight. And I printed two, I printed this and then I printed this and I assembled it. It's way too big. I sca it, the scaling was off. It's, it's been rectified. Um, don't worry about it. The supports were just falling off like butter. I mean, now granted this is temperature and filament settings and slicer settings, uh, but it was nice that the stock slicer was just giving me these types of results. It's like, it's, you get it. Then I printed some print and play stuff that wasn't a Flexi Rexy. I haven't printed one of these dragons in a while and it came out really, really focused. There you go. It came out perfect. There was no stringing between any of the spikes. Um, well, like a little bit at the very, very tip. But you guys, if you guys have printed these print and place dragons, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everything came out solid. This was a very quick, efficient print. And uh, yeah, it looks, looks really good. Now, the two failures, the big failures I had on this printer is when I went to go print some Iron Man stuff. Now, I'm not chalking this up to the printer, I'm chalking this up to the slicer. When I had initially got this printer, I was still using an old version of Creality Print, and you guys have heard me talk about it before. It was dog water. It was one of the worst programs I've ever used. They've gone and since updated. If you have Creality Print and it has a green logo, that's the new version. And oh my God, it's like they fired the whole team and hired people who actually knew what they were doing. These were sliced with old Creality Print and it just never worked good. And this is the problem with the speed of the printer. This is what I was talking about before. Just because you can print fast, doesn't mean you can print fast. It says it can do 600 millimeters uh, a second, but what if it's a big tall print and you have the bed moving back and forth? You're gonna have some failures. You need to adjust the speed of your print based on what you're printing. If it's really flat and it's easy and it's not gonna wobble around, you might be able to get away with that. But depending on what you're printing, you're gonna need to adjust your speed settings. The 600 millimeters a second is like in a perfect environment. Now I can go back, add more supports, readjust it, slow it down, but I kind of just didn't want to. I wanted to start printing out other stuff. You guys have seen me print Iron Man, tons of Iron Man stuff. As for handling the details on the inside of the mask, honestly, before it failed, it was it was pumping them out great. This is actually really impressive details uh, for a bed slinger that was going that fast. It just it just had some support issues here. That's it. Aside from that, not bad. So some closing thoughts. Is it worth it? Would I recommend it? Is there a better option out there? Well, honestly, for the size and the build volume you get with this type of printer, the, the V3, the 300 cubed, honestly, it's sitting right now in its own weird little spot where I, I would recommend this. I love my K1 Maxes, but they're nearly $800 and give you the same build volume. So if you're not as worried about the speed you can get on the K1 Maxes, which is faster than this V3 because it's Core XY, you can print much faster and stable. This isn't bad. It honestly doesn't take up much more room than the K1 Max. You have to consider the bed moving back and forth. So like, you know, if you have the back of the printer here, you have to just consider, ah! You just have to let the bed move I don't know, eight or nine inches back. So that's not too bad. Um, it does sit in its own weird little spot, like I said, and it's easy and reliable to use. The setup's easy. I am just a mess today. I think I'm done breaking stuff. We're good. As I was saying, yeah, I would recommend this. If you had about the $500 price range or budget to spend on a printer and you want something that can do helmets or larger pieces in one shot, 
there's nothing stopping me from recommending this to you. Now, the other two options on the market that are about the same size are the Elegoo Neptune 3 and 4 Plus. They sit at about, uh, it's like 260 for the 3 Plus, and I think it's 330 for the 4 Plus. However, I do have some issues with the 4 Plus, the, the Neptune 4 series. Clipper just wasn't, I, I, I've seen a mixed bag of issues with the Neptune series. I liked my 3 series, my 3 Plus, my 3 Max, but over time I started to have some glitchy or weird firmware issues with the touchscreen, odd freezing, updates weren't going through, and it just kind of became more hassle than it was worth. Why would I use my Neptune 3 when my K1 is just more reliable and I can just go to that? Now, I didn't use this printer as long as I've been using my K1s and K1 Maxes, but it's the same user interface. It's the same software firmware that is on my K1s, my K1Cs, my K1 Maxes, and I have been beating the brakes off of those, as you guys know, and I haven't had any weird glitchy issues. So if this is boasting the same firmware, I trust this. I trust whatever firmware system you want to call this, the K1 series firmware. I like this, and it, the printer is has been just as reliable as any of my K1s. So yeah, I get this. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please leave a comment down below. I read all of them, and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if you liked what you saw in the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot more printer reviews in work, including some FL Suns, some new Prusas, some stuff with the X1 carbon, and maybe even Elgu's new Centauri carbon, which might upset the market, might not, we'll see. But I do hope you found this video helpful. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.